In some ways, science has always recognized that everything is always interconnected. But, but it, the, everything is also interdependent. And you can't study everything all at once. So science has been very good at sort of slicing up the world into little pieces and then diving deeply down each little piece, and that becomes a discipline. And it's very easy to forget that that piece actually is still connected to everything else. We conveniently forget it, which creates something which is ultimately a whole system, but it becomes fractured. It may be that some small percentage of scientists are, are naturally uh, drawn to this idea of how, how does the thing that I'm studying fit in a larger context? And so for scientists who think about that, they eventually get to the idea of if they push it far enough that the universe is really just one big thing. If we ask the question, why are we here as human beings? The answer is then left to something as simple and uh, disastrously bad as there's no reason for us to be here. We're just accidents of genetics, and therefore we could do anything we want because we weren't intended to be here in the first place. So we have a pretty big disregard to our relationship and the world around us and the nature that we live in because we believe that organisms just got here by accident. When you look at the planet Earth, you find that we live in a very narrow zone of that supports life a perfect combination of gases in the environment, a perfect temperature and all this, and it stays constant, which has been a very unusual event of how can a planet keep a constancy in a world where everything is dynamic around it? And the answer is because nature has created one organism after another organism to keep the environment in balance and compensate for the ranges of activities that occur around us. So we keep a, what is called homeostasis. Very simple example is this. When the world was primarily plants, the environment, which had a carbon dioxide and some oxygen in it when they first started, later became depleted of carbon dioxide and oxygen increased because the plants were using the carbon dioxide continuously and releasing the oxygen continuously and the balance shifted. And there was so much oxygen on this planet that the planet was flammable. So at times lightning strikes would hit and burn up all the oxygen and burn up the planet. Life was not sustainable. So nature created a balance and the balance was called animals. Animals breathe in oxygen and release carbon dioxide, which is the complete reverse of what the plants were doing. So why is this relevant? Because when you put animals and plants in the same environment, as the plants take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen, the animals take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. This creates a cycle and a balance and harmony. So animal introduction was not uh, just a random event. It was required to keep balance in. Now look at life as a seesaw that goes up and down. And I go like this, as I put one organism on one side, it throws the balance off and tilts the seesaw this way. So nature puts another organism on this side to bring the balance back. So I said, where are humans in this seesaw? And why is that important? Because humans have so much power that if we're not clear of what we're doing, we can take the seesaw and put a little weight on one side and shift the entire balance of nature. And then we have to learn to come back and shift the balance back again. Well, without our awareness, of how we fit into nature. We lost sight of the fact that every other organism has been involved in keeping the environment more stable. We weren't to manipulate the environment. But if the balance now shifts way off because of humanity, then it means that nature will no longer support human life on this planet. It says that we have upset the balance of the environment and are causing our own extinction. So the writing is on the wall. We have to work collectively to create harmony back in the environment. When we become aware of this, we can engage in that activity as the primary direction of human civilization.